Welcome to the Collaborative Resource Hub by Wellness Provisions. I'm Amy McBride, owner of Wellness Provisions, the most badass wellness business. You're tuning in to the Delay Dying blog, podcast edition, because who wants to read when you can have someone read to you? Unless you like using your eyeballs. Then catch every single essay over on the website. Just select ones, make it to the podcast. And if you're the pill popping type, no supplements, then Well EP has you covered. We supply rock and rollers with high quality supplements. We're a trustworthy place to go where you can essentially shop blindfolded. Last but not least, my legal disclaimer, nothing in this essay or the collaborative resource hub substitutes medical advice. Please connect with your GP if you need medical guidance. These are my essays, my take on all things wellness, written to educate and inspire. Enjoy today's essay. Persevere or die. So you're walking along, awesome ideas floating through your head, doing cool things, and then the ground beneath your feet starts to feel unstable. Your shoe is getting sucked into a thick mud that seems to have taken over the path in which you were previously walking at a rather good clip. Why are you being slowed down like this? Everything was going so well. Confused, heart rate increasing, your ankle is being consumed by the sludge, trying to overtake your willpower. You feel the skin on your leg cool as the heavy sediment swallows more of your body. You try to stay calm as you inch deeper into the sludge. Can you formulate a plan to get yourself out of this? The sludge is up to your armpits. You know you won't be able to breathe through this once this crap gets to your chin, your mouth, your nose. You'll be dead. The goals you are working towards play vividly in your head. The success you could nearly taste lights up all of your senses, echoing, rattling in your skull. Just behind your left shoulder, you notice a vine splaying from the tree it was lazily meandering around. Intuition told you to turn your head. You listened. You managed to grab the vine, and after what feels like an endless battle, you're out of the sludge. You pulled yourself to safety. Back on your path, you collapse, exhausted, but not dead. And you lay there, steadying your breath, your eyes burning as you stare into the sun. You couldn't give up. Your vision, the cool things you were doing, it all mattered too much. You regrouped, you kept moving. So let me ask you, is that you? When you're on track to accomplishing something meaningful and you get thrown a curveball you weren't expecting, do you defy death? Or do you think if you're starting to drown, hope doesn't exist, so why bother trying to save yourself? What do you do when things get really tough? In this essay, I just want to touch on a few helpful tactics you can employ when you need to persevere and power through, when it feels like the world is against you and your dreams are vaporizing into intergalactic dust, never to be seen in full form again. Because trust me, I've been there. I mean, shit, I still walk into this space a lot. As an entrepreneur who has a podcast, who runs a social media account, who has a business selling products, who is a goddamn human being, this is something I deal with on a consistent basis. I feel like everything is going amazing. Things are growing and on an upswing. It's all happening. And then fuck you. That musician never followed through scheduling their interview. That awesome client stopped replying to you and the project fell apart. That person who said this or that never did the thing. And then I feel like everything sucks and why am I even doing what I'm doing? And I want to give up. But then I remember that I don't want to go back to working the aisles at organic grocers. I don't want someone else to make my schedule. I actually love what I get to do every day and I can't give up. This is too important. Helping people connect with themselves and improve their state of being is a gift. Bringing wellness into focus in an otherwise blurry scene is necessary, and I get to do that, even if it's hard. So here we go. That is tip number one. Connect with your purpose. Remember why you're doing the thing. Remember why you started, why it felt so purposeful and important to you. What happens if you ax it and go back to where you were? How would that feel for you? And what about the world or your community or whoever is on the receiving end of this thing? Are you doing them a disservice by quitting? Do you want someone else to end up doing the thing instead of you? 
could you be happy doing X, Y, and Z instead of the thing? Make a list if you need to. Write down the reasons why it's important to you and the feelings you get out of it on a good day because there will always be struggle and frustration in everything. So it may as well be for something that's worth it in the end, right? Tip number two, step back and take a break. When things feel impossible and the uphill battle just started dropping bombs from the sky and the hill just somehow became even more steep, take a step back and take a break. Forcing anything creates resistance. And when there is resistance, there is no flow. There is no ease. There is no love moving through you and the thing you're working towards. Go for a walk. Meditate. Sit in a dark room and listen to music that chills you out. Sit in the bathtub with water, take a bath. Call a friend who will make you laugh. Watch a movie that will shift the gears in your brain. Just allow yourself to stop suffocating that thing and in turn yourself and take a breather. With movement, with a shift in space and energy, fresh ideas can come to you that will allow you to overcome obstacles you thought were insurmountable. Also, naps. Highly recommend taking a nap. Tip number three, do not accept defeat. If your vision, mission, purpose, goals, if they're in your blood, you can't accept defeat. If you cannot fathom a life without them, then you can't give up. Bad days are going to happen. Setbacks are going to happen. Things are gonna go sideways. But could you honestly live a life of joy and purpose if you didn't fulfill this thing? So accept what's happening, but regroup, formulate a new plan where there's a will, there is a way. I firmly believe that and keep going, change your perspective, start telling yourself that the love you put out into the world comes back to you with even more intensity. Tell yourself it will work out. Look for other good things happening around you as a way to see good in what you're struggling with. Train your mind, brainwash yourself, expand your mindset to be that of positivity instead of self-loathing and hopelessness. What you feel is what you attract into your life. I'm going to say that again. What you feel is what you attract into your life. If you don't feel any success, you will not have any success. If you start to get yourself believing that success can happen to you, just as easily as that other guy, then success will start to find you. We see the world through how we feel. Again, we see the world through how we feel. Feel good things, see good things. And yes, it is a practice. This does not happen immediately overnight. You have to continue to adjust your perspective every day, every moment as you go. If you need a motivation boost, some inspiration, some ways to feel organized or on top of your game, reach out to me. As a pretty awesome wellness coach and someone who deals with this stuff on the regular, I can help get you to a better place where you can recover from setbacks faster because the struggle will still be there, but it's how you handle it that matters. Until next time, Amy from Wellness Provisions. Was a mess until I met 